Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Shalom. On a given Monday. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech. And more specifically, this is bigotry in America because we got a really walloping example of that on Saturday, Saturday the Sabbath. Um, so we're hosting a show today uh, called Attack on the Pittsburgh Synagogue The Causes, Effects, Reactions, and Implications. My co host, who cares deeply about the subject, is Marsha Joyner. Welcome, Marsha. Shalom. <laughs> I'm Rabbi Yitzhak Krasnjanski, who is the rabbi of Chabad of Hawaii. Welcome, Rabbi. Thank you for having me. Yeah. And uh, Pinchas Newman, who is a, a member of Chabad and a member of the Jewish community. Welcome. Thank you for coming down. Thank you. So let's talk about what happened. Uh, rabbi, you're first. What happened, at least from your perspective, you're a rabbi, this could happen in any synagogue. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's so terrifying, and um, and uh, the crime. I mean, any murder is uh, despicable and heinous, but for it to happen in a synagogue, in a place of worship, and prayer, um, in such an unprovoked way, it was purely uh, the uh, the age-old anti-Semitism coming through. Um, is very, very, very sad, and and our hearts go out for the families of the victims. And most of them were older people. One of the victims was, I think, was 96 or 97 years old. Yeah. And, and there were two brothers who two brothers. greeted people at the door, and it seems clear that they greeted, they greeted the, the gunner, the shooter. I didn't hear that, but that. Yeah. yeah. And then he shot them. Right. So it's, it's, it's a really shocking thing, it's a terrible thing, it's a shocking thing. And um, the Jewish community worldwide, and not only the Jewish community, the, uh, the whole community is, is in shock and is mourning for this senseless death and killing and hatred. And it, it uh, starts us thinking, uh, you know, why, why, uh, and how does this kind of thing happen in our uh, enlightened society? And we see more and more of it in the last couple of years, yeah. unfortunately. So well, the Anti-Defamation League reported that these kinds of anti-Semitic uh, episodes in the United States had increased by uh, more than 50% in one year during this administration. The most frightening thing and the uh, most shocking thing for us, quote unquote, Americans, the Jewish American uh, community, is that um, we, know, we know Judaism is, unfortunately, a history of anti Semitism all throughout the ages. And in the most uh, despicable way, in the Holocaust, which is now a lifetime, our parents' lifetime. Uh, but in America, for the most part, we, uh, the Jews have never had it better. It's a very uh, hospitable country, and uh, there's, there's no institutionalized um, er, uh, anti-Semitism, on the contrary. Well, we should talk about that, because there seems to be some kind of institutional process that's happening on the web. And there was a, a website called Gab, that this guy was uh, looking at and drawing his ideas from. And it was, it was turned off this morning by GoDaddy, which operates the domain. And he, that is, Gab, is going to have to find some other place as a, as a platform. They said they would. This troubles me. So, Pincus, um, you're, from, you're from Israel? I was born in Israel, yes. And you're here now, and I'm sure this has a great effect on you because uh, you're mm, aware of what happened in Europe? Well, uh, not only am I aware of what happened in Europe, but uh, I happen to be the only child of Holocaust surviving parents. So I, uh, I take anti-Semitic attacks a little bit personally, because had either one of my parents not survived Nazi Germany, 
I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you. Yes. So to me, they tried to snuff my life even before I was born. So it's kind of personal to me, uh, the anti-Semitic manifestations. Reaction, Pincus? What's your reaction? Well, <clears throat> just to put things in perspective, uh, in this day and age, it's not acceptable to go after people solely based on their religion. Well, what did these people in Pittsburgh do? Nothing. They were just Jews. That's what they did. They were Jews. They were very sweet people. And very sweet accounts. people. But the reason, they, the reason that they went after them is because they were Jews. The reason that they, uh, the, the killer went to the black church down south is because they were black. So this uh, singling out of people because of their religion is totally abhorrent to anything Western and to anything uh, decent. In, in, in our lives, uh, should not be, but it is. And just to point something out to you, uh, the only place in the, on the planet today where Jews are being systematically killed because they are Jews is in Israel. In Israel, Jews are being targeted solely because they are Jews. All the other reasons that uh, the other side gives is mere window dressing. You know, uh, the Christians there in the uh, Muslim lands don't fare any better either. And what's uh, interesting to me is that the, the world is kind of looking at it and not seeing it. Yeah. It's there. It's apparent. Yeah. Yeah, but don't leave out uh, La Belle France, will you? Uh, that's right. I should not leave there out La Belle France. yesterday about right. all the, uh, the violence against Jews in, in France in the past right. year or two. A and in Britain. And in Britain. And so, Russia. And Russia. And Russia. So um, let's turn to you, Marsha. Um, you're African-American. Um, and you care about this as, I suppose, a minority group who has had bigotry over the years in this country. Um, but more than that, I, I want to suggest something, and that is um, 70 years ago plus we had World War II. Your family was involved, and they fought in World well, War II. Yes. World War II was an effort which cost millions of lives to stop what Hitler was doing to the Jews, among other things. So that must affect you. Well, being born in the 30s, growing up with every day of the war, and what Hitler was doing to the Jews. And we had neighbors that were Jews, so I couldn't understand what was wrong with the Jews. And, but this whole thing of growing up with a war as a child, the food was rationed. We had to stand in line at the slaughterhouse to get two slices of liver. Everything was about the war. And knowing, growing up, knowing that Americans were fighting because, not only because, but mainly because Hitler was the, what was it called? The final solution, solution. to the Jewish problem. Yeah, the Jewish problem. Okay. So he's getting rid of the Jews and the gays and the gypsies. It's like, wow. And then, you know, so my family said, well, if he su su succeeds, we're next, you know. And so you're going up knowing this and feeling it. So Saturday, when it happened again, as you know, I just went all to pieces. I was just I a you, you basket called case. Me in tears. I was a basket case. Uh, what? And the Saturday before that, there was a man that went to a black church. The doors were locked. He couldn't get in, so he goes to a grocery store and kills two people, just because. And then this idiot comes with the bombs, mailing the bombs. And then this, it was just like an overload, I guess is what you call it. There was just, is there no decency? What? How have we gone so far down this road? <clears throat> And can we come back? Yeah. So, I mean, for a long time after World War II, um, you know, never again. Yeah. And it was true. You, you felt that. Never again. Now it's again. Yeah. What's happened? What, what is the process in the world, Rabbi, where we can say it's happening again? What has changed since World War II? That's a very interesting question. Uh, I just want to backtrack for a moment. You mentioned uh, when, when Hitler, Yamach uh, Shemoy, that we always had that when we mention his name in Hebrew, it means may his name be erased. Um, 
he said, or he wrote in his book, My Kampf, that the reason why he has to uh, rid the world of the Jewish problem is because the Jews represent the consciousness of the world. Conscious morality, ethics, and to him that stood in the way to his uh, uh, effort and ambition to take over the world. So sometimes you have to listen to your enemies to get a to get a sense of uh, who you are. Who you are. Yeah. Would you would you repeat that again, please, so our audience hears it? So Hitler said that the Jews um, are the conscious of the world. Their teachings, the teachings of the Bible, of morality, that's that's messing everything up for him. Mm. And. Um, they got in the way. Got they into the away. way. And uh, so, A, we need to remember who we are and what our message is. Anti-Semitism is really something which is very puzzling. It's, it's so difficult to, to, pin, to try to understand why and what's the motivation. You, you apply rational inquiry and you can't figure it out. You, well, I've been thinking about this my whole life. I can't figure it out. Can you figure the, the, it out? There's no way with a rational mind you can understand something that's irrational. Yeah. It's, it's the, the, the religious anti-Semitism is fueled by the, um, the, you know, the lie that Jews killed Jesus. The communists uh, hated Jews because they were capitalists. The capitalist anti-Semites hated Jews because they were poor and grubby, etc. So it, 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 it manifests itself in all different forms. In many ways, yeah. In many ways. Because, you know, so far, all I can see is that a GoDaddy, which is a tech company, stopped Gab. But I, I haven't seen any governmental action here. I haven't seen any talk of gun control. Um, even talk of gun control. I haven't seen anybody. I mean, there are candlelight vigils in various places in the country. But I haven't seen anybody actually suggest um, some kind of action to deal with this. Well, if you're talking about uh, monitoring the various websites, uh, obviously you run into, into, for, into the First Amendment rights of people, and that's, uh, that's a battle. Yeah, remind you, the Supreme Court has held that First Amendment is limited. You, you can't in, incite violence. Free speech does not include inciting violence. And that's what happened on well, Gab. Well, did anybody tell the president that he can't incite violence because he does? Well, you know, the problem, and I think, I think Pincus would agree with me, is uh, it's a very blurred line. It surely is. You can make uh, statements that will incite people and uh, you can target them to people who will pick up on your message, even if it's not specific. And so, he emboldens those people that are... Well, I, the, a, lot of, a lot of arguments, a lot of articles have been written in the past couple of days to that exact point. Um, and, uh, you know, advice from his own uh, family, including Jewish people in his family, have been, uh, why don't you cool it? Um, but you know what? <clears throat> Immediately after this event, he was off um, lambasting Democrats and, you know, r r taking political steps to try to win uh, the midterm elections in various places in the country. He didn't waste any time. So, you see, I, what, what interests me, and I like your reaction about it, is, um, you know, the, the silence is also a message. If you say something, and maybe it sounds a little perfunctory, so you have some effect. But then if you, if you go dance off and do something else, you know, completely unrelated to the enormity, horrendous quality of this attack, then you're, you're giving another message. And maybe taken together, people will accept that message as, as an incitement. I don't know. That's just me looking at it. How do you look at it? Well, this is how I look at it. Uh, you cannot lay everything at the president's feet, even though he's the highest official of the land. Uh, I don't think that anti-Semitism or racism need any excuse. Uh, they're, they're there and they exist anyway. Uh, anti-Semitism is as old as the pharaohs. Uh, 
<laughs> okay. Yeah, it does go back that far. Yeah. You're talking about Moses on the Nile. Yeah, that's right. That's, yeah. So uh, you can't pin it to, to anything. I think that uh, just hatred of the other uh, comes for from us humans and humanity in general still being a tribal society except these days uh, the tribes have different names you know they they call them countries they call them uh, ethnic groups uh, but we're still a tribal society and first come the members of my tribe and anybody that's outside that taken to the extreme members of the other tribe can be seen as enemies and uh, maybe the prevailing mood of the country is such mm. that there's all this divisiveness where the other is seen as the enemy. And once you're the enemy and once you're a rat, a la Goebbels, the propaganda minister of uh, his name I won't mention, once you're a rat, it's okay to kill, it's okay to exterminate you. Yes. So, so the, uh, I think there's a dynamic working here of uh, circling the wagons around our group, around our tribalism. tribe. Mm -hmm. Tribalism, we're still not so, out of tribalism. But if you, if you make the Jews the conscience, if you make the Jews nonviolent, and they are certainly nonviolent, I mean, as a group, as a, as a religion, as a culture, completely, completely nonviolent, um, what do the Jews do in response to this sort of thing? What do they do? Is candlelight vigils, is that the end of it? So, the answer, I believe, uh, is an several fronts at the root at the root um, we were always taught to respond to darkness with light which means that what happens in this anti-semitism and the racism and, and is really a, a, a result of a breakdown of values in our society uh, Going back to the Ten Commandments, they, 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 they teach us universal values of sacredness of life, of uh, love your, your neighbor as yourself, love your friend as yourself. These are the values that uh, really are the building blocks for a healthy society. And when you tear away at that, uh, and man is left to his most uh, basic uh, instincts, that. This is this is what this is the result of that. What can the Jews do? So I think that the the, the teachings of Judaism actually, uh, when 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 shared with the world, um, is what the world needs to hear in order to heal. On a practical level, the, the Torah tells us that um, that if someone comes up to kill you, you have to protect yourself. So yes, there has to be steps taken to uh, protect the, the, the synagogues, the communities. And here in Hawaii specifically, I mean, we've got many, many concerned people who told us on Saturday after we heard of what happened and yesterday and today that we need to get very serious about security. But it's a very... Uh, it's going to be a difficult thing because our whole culture is, you know, you open your doors wide and you welcome everyone and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, well, you don't want to be a leader steal? in gun. Didn't guns. someone steal from they you? They stole the Taurus from us, yes. Yes, yes. Well, right. Uh, I, I, just a moment on that. I mean, I, I personally saw that as anti-Semitism. Um, why else would you take a holy object, a, a bunch of holy objects like Torahs and steal them? Um, it's not it's not really a business deal. It's to make a statement against the Jewish people. Yeah, and there's uh, nothing you can do with it once you take it. I meant you can't try to sell it. In you a black can't, market. Yeah. But I don't think there's much of a black market but, for Torah. Yeah. There is one little piece here that I think we need to talk about because of this idiot. Uh, he was upset about the Hebrew Immigration Aid Society, and he on his website said that they were funding the caravan, which he was upset about these brown people coming in and taking over. Like Including they George Soros, who was one of the yeah. guys that got a bomb last week. Yeah, so, so. here we are. These, the, he, I, I printed this. The Hebrew Immigration Aid Society was founded in 1881. They have done nothing but good for people of every race, of everybody coming in to help, to assist, to pay for the uh, a ship. 
That's what, that's what makes it so ironic, you know. Uh, Hayas, Hayas, how do you pronounce it? Hayas. 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 Only does good things. It has been doing good things since 1881. Did good things for me when I came to this country. Yeah. 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 And my parents when they came to this country. So why would anyone say that it is not doing good things? It's no, only they, trying to help people. But they said Definitely that they were funding the caravan. And therefore, they made that connection. Not, you know, maybe they are funding, maybe they are helping, but Amnesty International is helping. Everybody's a of, helping. A lot of people in the, in the U.S. are very sympathetic to immigrants now. Yes. So, you can see that happening in Hawaii for sure. For sure. So the fact that they had made that connection and somehow, but well, because the president. It's like the rabbi said, Marsha, any port in a storm, there are so many reasons to pop up and scapegoat the Jews. The, and sometimes, well, all the time, those reasons have no, no rational you know, the fact validity that at all. The president has made this a bad word, the caravan, has turned it into a bad word, just emboldens this kind of a person to, to do stupid stuff. I think if we looked at the Gab website and some of the traffic that, that he was getting or, and immersing himself in, we'd find outrageous statements of all kinds there. And what troubles me, and I'm going to leave you with this question so you can tell me how you feel about it, uh, he was a loner. He was a freaky loner. Nobody knew him, really. And that's so often the case with these guys, with these, these terrorists. Um, and he had no community. But he did have a community. He did. He had the community on the web. He had the Gab website and he, other things that he looked at and that stirred him up. And although he may not be having coffee with these people, as might have been 100 years ago, um, he was engaging with them in social media. And so you have to place some of his craziness, if not all of it, on technology, on social media, on websites. But the person he worked for, the woman that owned the business, was a lesbian. And he told her, now he's, she's writing his check, she's paying him. He told her she was going to burn in hell because of it. He hated everybody. What, what, what do you say when I tell you that a person like this draws sustenance from the technology of a global community that feeds him hostility and hate, that feeds him these irrational, crazy thoughts? What do you say? I'd like to make a comment, okay? I, I'm not a psychoanalyst, and I'm not going to analyze the whys of what happened and if he was a crazy or not. I would like to address what Rabbi Eshel said earlier, and in Hebrew we say, Hakam lehorgecha hashkem lehorgo, which means the one that gets up early in the morning to kill you, you get up earlier and you kill him. Rabbi Eshel put a nice spin on it, but this is what it actually says. You're going to come in the morning and kill me, I'm going to get up early and kill you. In Israel, the incidence of armed robberies is, is asymptotically near zero. Why? Because everybody's armed. You don't go into a place to pull a gun because somebody there is going to have a gun pull on you. I think there's a lot to be said for protecting ourselves. Uh, every time a uh, thing like this happens, right away the opponents of, uh, the, you know, the proponents of gun control jump up and say, hey, it's because there are too many guns and we should uh, nix all the guns and whatnot. I, I, I think the opposite is true. Mm. If anybody goes into a place of worship or any public place and they don't know who there has a gun, that's a deterrent. They're going to think three times mm -hmm. before they mm -hmm. pull their... And if they do, there's somebody there to answer. You know, Rabbi, you and I sat together. It was a year, a year and a half ago. And also the Rebetzin, Pearl. We sat together and we talked about uh, the stabbings on the streets of Jerusalem. And we talked about a particular horrendous attack in a shul. Not, dis not dissimilar from what we had on Saturday, I, I where these guys, this, right. this yeah. fellow went in with meat yeah. axes. Yeah. He was oh, a yeah. butcher's yeah. assistant, yeah. and he butchered people yeah. and uh, hacked them right. in, the, in the shul. And it was the same sort of thing. What, what lessons do you draw from the experience in Israel? Well, um, like I said before, I mean, there is a, a great battle that's been going on for time immemorial between good and evil. Uh, Judaism teaches us that good will ultimately triumph evil. 
but this is the battle of good and evil. And when s something like this happens, uh, we need to strengthen ourselves by promoting good to ultimately eradicate evil. Obviously, uh, as Pinchas said, yes, we need to um, uh, be more uh, vigilant in protecting ourselves and uh, you know secure, you know, make sure uh, everything is secure. But in the larger point, I think this is this is the this is the expression of evil. Yeah. And um, in, you know, in a in a healthier society, there's less of that. Yeah. Well, it's certainly. If I, if I can just say one last thing, and this is, pertains perhaps more to the Jewish community, but also to all of, all of the communities, and that is when this when this killer murderer came in, um, he said that he wants to get rid of all the Jews. He didn't differentiate between one kind of a Jew and another kind of a Jew between uh, an observant Jew or a non-observant Jew, a right-wing Jew, a left-wing Jew, a politically-oriented Jew, business, rich Jew, poor Jew. He wanted to get rid of all the Jews. And uh, very often, we in the Jewish community, uh, we're very fragmented. You know, we, we look at the, the other, or we, from the rich, from the either right-wing, We left have wing. arguments about things. <laughs> yeah. And this is perhaps a wake-up call. It is a wake-up call. To realize that we're all one, and we have to, um, and all of, all of humanity, we're it's, all one. It's a, it's a wake-up call for the Jewish people in this country, maybe the world, but it's also a wake-up call for this country, because this is the worst anti-Semitic event that has ever taken place in this country. Uh, no question about it. And, is it really? and so this is, this is, this is uh, disrespectful of all of the morality, of all the, the gains, if you will, from World War II, from our success, the, the national success in World War II. And, um, well, I, I think we have to be mindful of it. And I think it's not, only, it's not only the people, not only the Jewish people, it's not only the people across the street who are not Jewish, it's the government, it's every institution. We have to get back to a rationale rationality. We have to get back to a morality. Marsha, uh, I know you've got some thoughts, and I want you to express them, and I want you to close the discussion. Okay. Uh, Shalom. Thank you so much for being with us. Saturday was, without a doubt, one of the worst days of my life. I was, when I called you, I was a basket case. I just went all to pieces. Even though I didn't know those people, is still that we are connected. And um, as you know, I have been a part of the Martin Luther King Coalition here in Hawaii for 29 years. And the biggest thing we take away from that is love. That that is how you overcome the darkness, is with light and with love. Therefore, we are asking our audience to share the love, even if they can't reach out and touch somebody. Do that. Share the love. Share it with all of us. That's the only way we can overcome the darkness. That's unanimous, isn't it? Yes, very much so. Thank, thank you, you Marsha. Marsha, join our Rabbi Itchel Krasnjanski and Pinchas Newman. Thank you so thank much you. for coming down. Thank you for inviting Aloha. us. Shalom. 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 Thank you, Jay.